Hello everyone, just wanted to uh, go through uh, PST Rotator, which is a brilliant piece of software. You have to pay for it, it's about 20 euros. Um, you can get a free demo of it, so you can go and download it now, get a free demo, uh, which is fully functional, but it only lasts for say 10 minutes, and then it will just close itself down, you have to reopen it again, so you lose any settings, but it gives you a good idea of what, what it's capable of. So I just thought I'd do a quick run through of um, how I use it and what, 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 why I've got it basically. Um, it's a fantastic piece of kit. Um, currently we've got the kind of main window. You can change this and have presets on and everything. Um, change the kind of window setup. Um, but I just wanted to show you roughly the kind of things it can do. I mean, it's I, I don't think I'll be able to fit it all in this video. There's just so much in there. Um, First, you've got to obviously set your controller up. Mine is uh, Yaesu G450, the, the new DC version. Um, and I've got the uh, ERC rotor card in there, uh, which gives you a USB connection. That's then set up um, with this as a COM port. So I've got it on COM port 10. Um, as you can see, there's lots of other settings. You can link it with um, step IR Yagi's and Ultra Beam Yagi's. You, you, there's a relay option, so you can um, add a USB relay um, and control, uh, you know, 12 volt devices or even any other voltage devices via the relay, which is quite useful. I might uh, I might get to do this with, say, an antenna switch, for instance. Um, you've just got so many options and, and ability ability with it so uh, but what i tend to use it for is obviously just turning the antenna but the best part about it is the the lookup so you can obviously punch a locator in um, or a call sign uh, click go or click the qrz button and it will look them up and then point at them so let me think of a call sign uh, let's just make one up shall we um this probably won't be made up because it might be something I know. Um, let's try Chris, my friend Chris, G0WUS. Oh, wait, there you go. It's come straight up with his locator. So I can either click go to locator, or I think I can just click go. Let's try that. Oh, yeah, I can hear it's moving. There we go. We can see it's turning now to the new position. It hasn't had to turn very far. Um, and it's as simple as that. It's really good. So quick look up. So say you, you run in a contest or you just want to look for a locator. So let's go with um, sort of IO82 Lima Bravo, for instance. Click go, go to locator. So it's brought a black line up just here of where um, where that is. Um, that's not actually turning yet, though. Oh, it is. Yes, it is. And off it's gone. There it goes. So as you can see, there's a, um, a little triangle on here. That's the 3 dB beam width. So you set that up in the settings. Where did it go? Here. And then you basically tell it uh, for each antenna, you tell it the, the, the beam width basically of your antenna. So uh, you can have two antennas. Uh, the idea of having two antennas is it will give you two markers on the display. So what you can then do is you can set one antenna at a different bearing to the other. Say you're trying to avoid um, you know, conflict between antennas if they're too close together. Sometimes people will, will fit them say 45 degrees apart and then you can make this display uh, uh, the kind of position of that second antenna then switch between the two. You can do it with a dipole and then you can switch direction of the dipole. That's what these buttons here are for. And obviously change the antenna. So it's really good in that respect. Um, but like I say, I mainly use it for the the locator and call sign lookup, which is great. Um, you can set a parking position. So if I click that, that's my parking position. Um, that can be into the wind, that can be whatever's the kind of least visual impact, which is what mine's set for. Uh, that position hides it behind the roof better. So I've um, when the mast's lowered, so I've got that set. You can tell it to point into the wind. You can set up the wind as well. So let me see if I can. You can bring up weather information. So that will tell you um, the um, weather information basically near to you, the, the nearest kind of village to you, um, which is good. So and then you can tell it at whatever position or point 
that you want the uh, the wind, um, you know, kind of it to make an adjustment because of the wind. So I've got mine set to wind speed 20, wind gust 25. Um, and it's telling it when it hits a wind gust of 25, it will then point my antenna into the wind. You can say, no, I want it to point 90 degrees off the wind, 180 degrees off the wind. You can say, no, actually, I want it to go in the park position, etc., etc. You can use various different weather, um, you know, uh, applications for this weather data feeds and things. So, yeah, fantastic ability there and to do that you then click you turn it on by this button so that's now waiting for the weather the wind to um to get bad and then it will it will turn uh what else have we got the maps then let's talk about the maps in the background i've got um the google maps version which is really good um i don't know whereabouts we're sat on google maps but if you come right out oh that's where we are um it will tell you where you are. You can basically, that's, it, you can pinpoint a place and then point to it. So if I double click on the map, say there, it will now turn the antenna, as you'll see the antenna is turning to there, um, which is really good. So um, let's get another one. We'll go there instead. So that's quite handy. You can change the map to be of various different types. Um, so you can have, this this style with the um, grids on it and things like that. So if you wanted to work out a beam heading or where somebody is or whatever, uh, I prefer the Google Maps just because it looks a bit sort of more modern and these look a bit like kids' drawings. These other maps, no offence, but <laughs> um, <clears throat> is that the Europe one? Ah, there you go. So I'm not so keen on the visual um, appeal of these. I don't really like them, so I tend to use the Google one. UK, that's not too bad, the UK one actually. Again, so you can pick uh, a place here. Um, also, if you type, I think if you type a locator in, it will give you, it'll do it on that way instead. So there you go, there's that locator, then click go or double click on the map and it'll go to it. So <clears throat> that side of it is really good. I like that uh, with the maps. Uh, finally, just a, as a part of this quick overview, uh, which I use um, quite a bit, which I find fantastic, is it's got a built-in web server. So it's got um, the ability to um, access the device from um, from anywhere, I suppose, and you can obviously control your antenna via the web browser from anywhere in the world, as long as you then set up the correct port forwarding on your router, your home router. But I've done it slightly differently. What I've done is, um, let me show you, I've this is mine. I've actually created my own web page for it. Um, changed ever so slightly <clears throat> as to what you get standard. Sorry, I keep uh, coughing, by the way. I probably need a drink. And with a bit of jiggery pokery in JavaScript, uh, which I've um, borrowed from the internet and just a bit of my own knowledge of uh, HTML, I've managed to create this little mini web page, which every 15 seconds updates and tells you that the current bearing of my rotator. You have to obviously have the rotator program open um, all the time in the background for this, but it then allows you to um, to view where it's pointing. So let's um, let's move it. Let's park it, take it there, and then watch the, uh, the web page update. So every 15 seconds, it should give you an update of where the, the beam heading is. And the reason I've done that is um, for my web SDR, so that I can uh, point users to it, and then they can see where the antenna's pointing. So hopefully in the next few seconds, it should update. Um, actually, that's frozen. It's solid, doesn't it? <laughs> Let me hit refresh myself. Oh, have I gone and broken it now? No, there we go. One, five, three. Pretty much uh, bang on. Exactly right. So that's uh, that's how that works, which is really good. The actual standard one you get. Um, can I show you that? The standard page is. Um, I think I've put it in here. This, 
this is the standard one if I open this up it's what it would look like if you were to that's the one that comes with it so it's not going to work I don't think because I've got it in the wrong folder uh, I've removed this one but that's what you would actually get if you did set it up like I've done but without your own um, HTML page and that gives you full control then via the, the web browser then you can adjust to see if you like the colors I mean they're a bit horrible the colors of this but you know you can change it all how you want so I might make a second web page that allows me to do that um, but for now I've done it so from my web SDR which um, most people know of here's the web SDR what I can then do is I've got a little tab here click on that and that will go straight to my antenna position um, and then you can see so that's why I've done it like I have so I've removed all the control aspect from this web page otherwise people will be logging in and they'll be controlling my antenna when I want to use it so um, but what I might do is have a second one so that I can then log in and control it remotely if I want to so um, and that would be this one but again I'll modify it and I might even put that little JavaScript in that gives you a, a, a needle uh, which is quite a useful little thing what I'm trying to do is I've got a, um, a background compass image uh, which I'm currently trying to learn how to do this is out this is an F SVG Sierra Victor Golf um, kind of image um, dynamic image which is which is placed on the HTML file uh, with a bit of JavaScript but what I want to do is put a, a background image so it's overlaid over the top of it um, and then it will correspond to the compass reading which would look quite smart but I can't work out how to do it yet so I'm uh, that's that's coming up but yeah, I might do that, make this look similar with that in as well and have the just have a nicer a nicer layout of it. So that's a really good sort of also useful feature that PST Rotator does. Um, if you want that, um, I think that's brilliant. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, this is where you can set your presets up. You can go, there's so many things. I don't think I can go through it all. Um, different views, so you can shrink the views down or you can make it even bigger so you get your presets added to I haven't bothered with the presets because I'd rather just click on the map or go this map here or go to the main map and then find somebody or just type a locator in and do it that way or even a call sign so let's do another random call sign that and I'm just going to make one up now uh, I, I don't know if this is going to exist click QRZ oh, it's red it goes off to QRZ, hunts for it. If it finds it, it comes back. Uh, it isn't going to find it, is it? I've made this up, haven't I? Uh, let's do another one. This time I'm going to do one I do know. Oh, it already knows it. <laughs> yeah, you can look it up and then via QR, QRZ it will bring up the details and then, you know, it'll go give you the, the, the bearing. Then you can click go to locator. So really useful feature i love it fantastic bit of kit so it's it's certainly worth the money i really think anyway that's it for now um i don't want to go through too much more i don't really use that many more functions on it but it, it as you can see it's got a lot of functionality um it's one of those really useful amateur radio apps um, or pieces of software that i think uh, i feel that everybody needs that's it for now thanks for watching